is it time we banned superstitions for good? Well, I'm afraid they're ingrained into you. My mum was from Ireland and very superstitious. We had so many different things that we weren't allowed to do, like put new shoes on the table. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> but don't put them on the table! Oh, 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 oh my God, that'd be the damn full of space shoes. show. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just to reassure you, they're not new. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and the other one was, when you see a coffin, you have to hold onto your collar until you see a four-legged animal. Sometimes this is quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> Driving round his little one handed, holding on to my collar, <laughs> trying to find a horse or a dog somewhere. <laughs> the husband. The husband goes, for God's sake, you don't get to you. Why don't you adopt the cat? You'll always have a four-legged animal. Well, I always thought that oh. black cats were meant to be lucky. Not oh, unlucky. well, they are. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you I, can I've let enough, go your collar, I've got babe. enough with a deaf dog. I don't want a cat and all. Thank you very all much. Right. But, um, yeah, so many different superstitions. You must have loads of superstitions. Yeah, yeah, every time I see a magpie, I'm always saluting, always. But with me, with my uh, career, what? salute to the magpie. If don't, you don't you just look like some demented person? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's loads of magpies. Yeah, and there's, magpie there's a riddle, isn't there? You know, one for sorrow, two for joy. You know, it's all that. And that's ingrained in me completely. But with my job, it's more kind of I've become very ritualistic so yeah. when I'm doing a stage show and on tour for example on my dressing table there's a, there's a towel with all my stuff on now that towel that I use bear in mind some tours can be like three months old I never wash it it's you just... mean for 90 days yes. this yes. rag yeah. just... I know because it's it's sort of right that's how I started and it must end otherwise it'll affect my performance and the really really minging one this is a minging one <laughs> on Wednesdays and Saturdays it's a two show day with the matinee I won't wear a clean, clean pair of stockings for the second show. <laughs> <laughs> I wear the same stockings because it'll affect my performance, if I don't. Yeah. Well, it just affects the audience when... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in the front row for show two. Can you imagine, imagine when I did Calendar Girls and I was naked? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Linda, can I... This colour thing, explain it. I don't understand I don't know what, what it is. is. Is There's a coffin, right? So you see it and then for some reason, from when we were very young, my mum made us hold our collar until we saw a four-legged animal. But well, what if you don't see the animal? Like you, if you, you can't let go ages. until you... Until you, <laughs> <laughs> you have to go, you you have have go to parks. You have to go everywhere looking for a four-legged animal. But didn't you go out? I went to the pictures once when I was quite young and I'd seen, I'd seen a coffin. So I got to the pictures. My little cousin at the time was very ill in hospital. Um, what, it was True Grit, John Wayne Cowboy film. So there was an horse on the screen. So I thought, oh, that's a four-legged animal. That'd be fine. Let go of my collar. The next day, my little cousin died. And I kept thinking in my head, I know it sounds stupid, I mean, she was very ill anyway, but because I'd let go of my collar. And it has to be like a real animal. It can't be one on the screen or anything. But after I'd sat there for like two hours, I thought, I'm going to let go of it now. And I did, and that's what happened. Oh. No, that isn't what happened, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard of anything so ridiculous. My mother was Welsh, but she was incredibly superstitious. And she had loads of rituals every Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, we'd have tea. She'd read the tea leaves for the coming <laughs> week. Well, she couldn't just get a newspaper or turn the telly on, I don't know. <laughs> but her best trick, and I've got a props at vast expense, I've got this. Now, when I was about eight or nine years old, you know how when you're a kid, you suddenly get a wart? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just, like, sprout out of your body, and yeah. you know that all the other kids at school are going to give you real grief about well, that wart, friend, which yeah. you haven't asked for, and you haven't been particularly evil to get it. But my mother said, right, this is the Welsh superstitious way of dealing with a wart. She got a potato, cut a bit off it, rubbed it over the wart while saying a Welsh spell. <laughs> and then we had to go out in the garden and bury the potato. <laughs> and she tie not a normal bandage that would, like, not invite attention, but some dirty old bit of rag off a pillowcase that are worn out <laughs> over the wart, right, and say the Welsh spell <laughs> all over again. Oh, I better put my witch's hat on. <laughs> We had to go in the garden and look for the potato. Now, we all know as adults, she probably dug that bloody potato up after day one. <laughs> we couldn't find the potato and she'd go, blah, 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 undo the thing, walk gone. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I really believed it. To be honest, the walk probably lost the will to live. <laughs> <laughs> for more Loose Women action, click here. And I'd subscribe if I were you. It's totally free and it means you'll be kept up to date with new videos and exclusive YouTube content.